Welcome to Module 5, Immediate Crisis Stabilization. This fifth in a series of online learning modules provides an introduction to care coordination using the wraparound practice model in alignment with the National Wraparound Initiative. These modules focus on providing an introduction to the practice model, wraparound facilitation skills and competencies to implement the model, and links to further resources for the learner about wraparound practices. The Butler County Family and Children First Council partnered with the Center for School-Based Mental Health Programs at Miami University to produce the learning modules. Please push the forward arrow on the bottom right to advance to the next slide. Here are the objectives for this module. By the end of this module, participants will be able to identify the goal of crisis stabilization, understand the process and their role of facilitator in crisis stabilization, and incorporate interventions and strategies to predict, prevent, and protect families during crises. Immediate crisis stabilization is needed at times when families are beginning the wraparound process. In preparation for meeting the family face-to-face -face initially, the facilitator looks at the referral information, which may provide information about potential crises or safety issues. Additionally, the facilitator often talks on the phone with the parent or caregiver to set up a time to meet face-to-face. -face. Sometimes the parent may alert you to safety concerns and the facilitator confirms basic ways to seek help if needed and will discuss further when they meet, ideally shortly thereafter. As the facilitator gets to know the youth and family during the engagement face-to-face -face meeting, the facilitator is tasked with stabilizing any immediate safety issues or crises issues. No person in great stress or who is concerned about personal or family safety can enter fully into an important relationship or begin the strengths, needs, and culture discovery part of the wraparound process if they are overwhelmed or concerned about basic safety. Therefore, the facilitator directly asks the family if there are any immediate safety or crises concerns. The facilitator demonstrates a willingness to partner with the family from the start in addressing these concerns. Safety and crises concerns may take many forms, but the two most frequent are concerns about the safety of the youth and concerns the youth may do something that puts others in jeopardy. Possible examples which may rise to the level of urgent crises may be the youth has history of severe cutting, head banging, suicidal gestures, assaults others, or acts out that the parent feels an urgent need for help. Other times, the crises or concern is not related to the behavior of the youth. Sometimes the crises may be they have no food to eat or they are being evicted. The facilitator takes the lead from the caregiver if this situation is a crisis for them. Then the facilitator asks themselves, what is enough help to deal with crises until team can meet? What are the risks of waiting? Are there some basic ways to intervene to provide enough safety or reduce risk? The facilitator wants to do enough for a short-term intervention, but not try to develop a long-term solution, as this is the work of the team, and the facilitator may inadvertently wrongly teach the caregiver the role of the facilitator. Additionally, at this point, the facilitator may only have limited understanding of the underlying needs leading to the situation or behavior. The facilitator should elicit as much information as possible about the nature of the potential crises and the specific safety concern. We will now introduce the three P's of crises planning. Predict. We want to identify the crises and the contributing factors that leads to the crises. Prevent. We want to develop proactive steps to prevent the crises. Protect. We want to develop reactive safety enhancing action steps that minimize crises or help restore and keep everyone safe. Predict. We are identifying when, where, and with whom crises situation occurs. Prevent. We are paying attention to 
Take note of changes that generally occur prior to situation. Body language, words spoken. What are the telltale signs things are escalating? Protect. Helps caregivers and youth recognize that they have the ability to cope and manage crises. Using the youth and family strengths, as well as building from things that have worked in the past, increases the likelihood the plan will be successful. Be developmentally appropriate and realistic. Steps in immediate crisis stabilization. In the next couple of slides, we will review the steps the facilitator takes to break down the crises and develop a plan to prevent or reduce the likelihood of them happening in the future. The facilitator helps to clarify which concerns need immediate attention. The facilitator explores what they have tried, what works, and what are their current plans to address concerns. If the crisis is an immediate physical need, natural support or community resources may be identified to tide them over until further help can be put in place. If it is the child's or someone else's behavior, Explore what happens before the crises, during and afterwards, and try to understand the function of the behavior. Is it to avoid something, gain control, or attention? It will be easier to change the concerning behavior if you address the function or need it is meeting. Brainstorm replacement behaviors the person can do. Are there simple rules or routines that can be put into place? To support the desired replacement behaviors or reduce triggers for it occurring? Thinking back when they described what they tried and what worked, or when they were describing their family, are there any strengths that can be employed to encourage desired behaviors? The facilitator's role at this juncture is to mobilize all necessary resources to ensure that the safety concern is addressed so the family will stabilize enough and the wraparound process can move forward. Let's look at the family we introduced in the last module and listen to them explore what are potential crises for the family and ways to minimize them occurring or how to handle them. He can just go off, right off getting out of the bed in the morning mm -hmm. and you know that's really scary because we have no clue mm -hmm. what is going on internally with him and, and he will just get out of control to the point where we're, we're just sitting back because we're just like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's heartbreaking that we have to call the police, but we have been told in the past when he's been escorted, we are never to try to escort him because the t few times that we have tried to take, and take him to the hospital, he has literally pick, picked up things out of the back of my van and threw them at me because I was driving. Um, he had a, a little TV monitor in the back of his, you know, in the back of the seat that he watched, and he put his fist through that and just totally shattered that. And um, I mean, he throws things, and it's not safe for us to transport mm -hmm. him. And so we have no choice but to call the police. Of course, we let them know right away that when they come, you know, that he, what's going on, so that you know, their first thing is, well, we'll just take him to juvenile mm -hmm. detention center. And no parent wants that when your child is the kind of a child he is. This is not a child. He does not, I don't even know, I think he is right sometimes when he does not know what's bothering him, right. and that's why we need help. So are you aware of um, our local crisis um, people? Yes. Because it sounds like you've been using, you've been going to write to the police, and right. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that there is a crisis hotline. Yes. It is, um, it's actually um, w um, ran through one of our local mental health agencies, so they have people who can, if you call them, they might be able to help you walk through some de-escalation mm -hmm. while the things are happening. But they they will also respond in person. When they do that, they come out with law enforcement. Yes. Um, if it's during the day, they actually have somebody who is assigned to them and has a lot of training, so you don't have to keep repeating your story over and over right. again about, you know, where Sam is struggling and right. how what his what his what kinds of things are affecting him. Um, so. You know, I, I would encourage you as 
you're waiting for the team to start all of its planning to okay. consider contacting them even even when you're not in crisis to kind of t give them a heads up they can write a little profile so that's that's one thing i you know i want to make sure that i'm leaving you with a plan that will be a little bit more helpful um, the other thing is to talk about maggie's safety since she's a younger child um, do you have a plan in place when he starts to get really upset about her, with her and for a time she would actually just go in her room and shut her door mm -hmm. and she would stay in there but also we now have uh, some of the last episodes that have been really 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 bad um, when we call the police I will take her and her and I will just leave okay. we will either go out and just sit in our van or we will leave or I'll walk her down the street and then my husband will wait for the police um, okay. we, because you're right she is also our top concern when mm -hmm. he's doing this um, you know, we can probably pretty much take care of ourselves, not always, but um, at the same time, she, we do have to take care of her mm -hmm. and make sure she's safe. We will certainly, that's one of the things that we do in Wraparound is start to look at these things that are sending you to the, ho sending him to the hospital, and right. having you have to call the police and feel not like you're not safe. And we'll be working through plans that hopefully put some things in that will pre prevent. From this clip, you can hear the family's concern for their son's behavior and what they currently do and what works. The facilitator discusses resources for immediate help and plan for team to assist with further crises prevention. Let's look at some other examples. In the first scenario, the facilitator went out to meet a family and gather information for the strengths, needs, and culture discovery. The mom was a single mom with two daughters in the home and one son. The daughters were both older and her son was nine. In talking about urgent crises, mom informed me that her son went into his room last night and locked the door and wouldn't let her in. She reported he had a history of saying he wanted to hurt himself and she was worried that he might do something. The facilitator explored what occurred prior to this and he had an argument with his sisters. Her plan to break this up is to send him to his room to cool down. But after doing this, she was afraid that maybe he would try to harm himself as he locked the door. The facilitator discussed her son's underlying need that he sees his other sisters do things he can't and gets angry with them and feels left out. There is a pattern of it escalating when they do not respond the way he wants. They brainstormed ideas, ways to help him still feel included, changing going to room routine, enlisting sisters in how to deal with him, changing locks, getting therapists to work on feelings and alternative responses, removing items that could be harmful, and checking medication. The mom chose strategies she felt would work for her family. They looked at his medication to make sure that he was taking his medication and this was not the source of irritability. His mom contacted therapists about incident and got her support to help him work on how he deals with his feelings. They came up with weekly activity they could all do together. They made a list of all the service providers active in his life and facilitator created a contact sheet list with the mobile crises unit phone number, her service provider phone numbers, as well as the on-call phone number for her service provider for her to seek help if he escalates to this point again and she feels she can't manage safely in the home. Mom called the maintenance person and requested that he come over and remove the doorknob from her son's door. After these steps, she was able to continue with the wraparound process. She felt safe in her home. She thought her son was safe in her home and we were able to set up an initial wraparound meeting the following week to get started. Let's look at another scenario. Matthew lives with his mom and dad and younger brother, Steve. Matthew likes to be active and loves playing football, but struggles at times getting upset or being in a bad mood. Mona has a good friend she talks to, Michelle, who listens to her and shares ideas she has learned from her family. Matthew feels he doesn't always measure up in his parents' eyes. Sometimes when this happens, Matthew has even hit Mona and or destroyed the house by flipping over furniture or punching the walls. 
The police could be called and he could end up in the hospital or detention for a violation of his probation. This leads to him further feeling like a failure, in addition to straining his relationship with his parents again and possibly being removed from his home. The facilitator is meeting the family for the first time and clarifies that Mona and John feel like the smallest thing set Matthew off and they never know when he is going to react with anger. In exploring it with Matthew, he says he feels angry all the time. He feels one minute he is fine and the next he is just so mad. From his parents' point of view, it could be small things like put the dishes in the dishwasher or no TV until homework is done that will turn into a big outburst. It is confusing to them because one day he may follow these directions without escalation and the next day it turned into a full-blown crisis. In discussing further, they say they have tried medication to help with the anger, counseling, setting house rules, and calling the police. None of these strategies have brought consistent success. It seems Matthew blows up to avoid doing something he really doesn't want to do. Once he does that and knows he has failed again, all bets are off. The facilitator brainstorms with them what else may they try, having visual reminders instead of verbal ones, reassessing medications again, using his love of football in some way to encourage positive behavior, having a plan B day when they know he is in a bad mood, give him some say so in how house rules are applied, separate him from others if he is getting upset. From this, they come up with the plan to reduce the chance of the crises. Before leaving for school, Mona will assess Matthew's mood. She will ask how he is feeling and she will remind him of how valued and loved he is. If she determines he is having a rough morning by the way he answers the question, she will text Coach Smith to have him go to the weight room to lift for 10 minutes before class. Matthew will provide short answers, not smile, and roll his eyes to indicate the day may not go well. If he is smiling and silly, playing with his brother, this indicates a good start to the day. Matthew will follow the schedule on the refrigerator after he comes home from school on his own. Mona and John will avoid prompting Matthew about chores on the schedule until an hour before bedtime. If Mona or John notices Matthew is starting to get tensed up or agitated, they will acknowledge his frustration, but remind him that his brother may not understand it and ask if he wants to go for a walk one-on-one -on -one and or talk it out. If Matthew continues to be agitated, like fast walking, slamming doors, short responses, not playful, he will be encouraged to go to his football cave in the garage to work on plays he can share with his coach at the next practice. If Matthew starts yelling, throwing things, swings his fist, Mona and John and Steve will remove themselves to another room. They will text Matthew that they are there and they care about him and they are a team no matter what. Mona will go to her room and phone Michelle. Michelle will help Mona stay grounded and keep the mood light for at least 15 minutes before reassessing the situation. John will listen for any additional disruptions before taking the next steps. From this scenario, you can see that the facilitator listened to what the crises was for the family and explored what happened before and after the crises and what had been tried and worked or didn't work. They then looked at natural or community supports such as mom's friend Michelle or Matthew's coach's resources that could be put in place to help prevent or manage crises. They brainstormed other ideas they or Matthew could do to help him. They considered his need to be reassured that they still loved him even though he may have messed up. They developed enough of ideas that the family was able to move forward. In Module 10 and 11, we will explore crises and safety planning further once the wraparound team is involved and can provide additional help. Congratulations! You have completed Module 5, Immediate Crisis Stabilization.